The 1990s were all about world and national politics, ending the Cold War, the first Persian Gulf War, and the impeachment of a president. Closer to home on the Hill, it was time for more major construction, plus celebrating fine arts and the national forensics team. The Cold War ended with a whimper instead of a bang as walls came down and the former Soviet Union collapsed into smaller nations. In August 1990, when Saddam Hussein invaded the neighboring country of Kuwait, many Americans did not fully grasp the ramifications. President Bill Clinton's personal behavior was publicly debated in 1998 as to its merits as a non-impeachable or as an impeachable offense. The decade opened with rights undergoing a much-needed modernization and expansion. The results completely remade the building by celebrating the river view in its flowing addition to the southwest. The 1991 yearbook captured the construction frenzy with its title, Complete Chaos. Phase one of construction started in summer 1990. The original student parking lots and the 20-foot letters that spelled R-E-I-T-Z on the hillside facing Evansville were removed. Luckily, the concrete of the oldest letter, the R, which had been the beacon on the hill since 1924, was so thick that it could be excavated, slid down the hillside for storage, and then hauled back up when earthwork was finished. The parking lots and site work were done in preparation for further renovations. Contractors built retaining walls and constructed a road connecting Lemke Avenue to Austin Avenue around the hilltop following the curve of the building along the Ohio River side. Along Lemke, the ground was terraced and tiered parking lots were added. With phase one completed, phase two commenced. Throughout 1991 and 1992, an additional building was constructed that contained classrooms for the business, social studies, and home economic departments, as well as a choir and band room. The building also housed a new expanded cafeteria that could accommodate more students since the EVSC had moved to on-campus lunch only. A hallway of glass windows that served as the main entrance and commons area linked the old building to the new. Office and media center renovations were also completed at this time. In 1993, renovations to portions of the old building within the three-story classroom wing were finished. Inside the 80-year-old school, science labs were updated, lockers were replaced, and flooring was installed. Phase three of construction followed starting in 1994 with renovations to the auditorium and gymnasium. In 1995, the remaining classrooms, small gym, industrial arts renovations were completed, and air conditioning was introduced into the building. By 1998, Wright celebrated its 80th anniversary with the building remodeled to look new. More than $26 million was spent refurbishing the school, making Wright's High School the newest-looking school in the city of Evansville. The most dominant program at Wright's during the 90s was speech and debate. What began to flourish in the 1980s under the leadership of Robert Brumley grew into the most dominant program in the state under the direction of Dan Durbin. Durbin, a 1977 graduate of Wright's, took over the program in 1989. They claimed the Indiana High School Forensic Association sectional title from 1991 to 1999 and were state champions five straight years from 1995 to 1999. They also won the National Forensic League Speech Sweepstakes Award in 1990, 1991, and from 1993 through 1996. A large number of Wright students were also crowned national champions or All-Americans during the decade. The instrumental music department saw a transfer in leadership from accomplished director Art Aidy to former Wright's drum major David Smith. In 1993, Smith took over the state-recognized marching band and concert bands and continued their winning ways. Aidy remained in charge of the orchestra for one year while he transitioned to the social studies department. In 1994, Smith took over all of the instrumental music programs. 
the band and orchestra continued to consistently place in the top 10 at state between 1995 and 1999. Under Smith, the marching band also qualified for state in 1993, 1997, and 1998. After the 98-99 school year, Smith went to Tompkins Middle School while working on advanced degrees. Kurt Weimer was named the head of the Wrights Instrumental Program. Following the resignation of James Haygood just before the 1998 school year, Rick Raymond took over the vocal music program. As the 1990s opened, Raymond led the department and continued to achieve at the state level. The highest finish for Raymond's choir was third in 1991. The choir also finished fifth in 1990, 92, and 94. After Raymond left in 1996, Kathy Porter took over, and under her leadership, the Swing Choir finished third at state. The 1990 football season was Coach Bill Hape's last. At the beginning of the 1990-91 school year, Hape was named the new assistant principal in charge of discipline. While he left the classroom, he remained on the sidelines for one more season. After a 6-4 and four final season, Hape was replaced by Bob Gaddis. Gaddis raised expectations when he told supporters at his first Armin's cookout that he wasn't, quote, about winning city and SIAC titles, but was focused on winning state titles. After a disappointing 3-6 and six record in his first year, Gaddis's 1992 team finished 11-2, and two, capturing city, conference, sectional, and regional titles. The first regional in school history. Led by All-State players Josh Wicker, Dwayne Brantley, and Andre Vaughn, the 1992 team would be Gaddis's most successful of the decade. One of the best teams of the 90s was the 1995 team that ended the season 8-2, with both losses coming in heartbreaking fashion to the eventual state runner-up North High Huskies. In 1999, Panthers won a sectional title by defeating Castle 14-7 to close the decade. The Wrights baseball team experienced unprecedented levels of success in the early part of the decade. Since the IHSAA began the sectional baseball tournament in 1967, Wrights had never won a sectional. In 1991, on the strong pitching of three seniors, Mike Fetcher, Charlie Gilmore, and Scott Hart, and one very talented freshman, Roger Getty, the Panthers won the first baseball sectional in school history. They knocked off Central 5-4 in the first game and then beat West Side rival Modern Day 7-3. The following week, they went on to win the regional, the only Wrights baseball team to do so in the first hundred years of the school's existence. The Panthers fell in a heartbreaking one to nothing loss to Jasper in the first game of semi-state when future St. Louis Cardinal Scott Rowland drove in the only run of the ball game. Fetcher would go on to play baseball at the University of Southern Indiana where he was an All-American. The baseball team followed up the successes of the 1991 season with three more sectional titles in the following years. In 1992, the Panthers defeated Modern Day 7 to nothing to claim the sectional before falling to Memorial in the Emsville Regional semifinal game. When Roger Getty graduated in 1994, he was drafted in the second round by the Pittsburgh Pirates. A new basketball coach was named early in the 1990s. The 1991-92 basketball season brought Coach Charlie Farmer his only Southern Indiana Athletic Conference title. The Panthers finished with a 16-6 record and claimed a portion of the conference title. After a career record of 104 and 109 in 10 seasons, Farmer resigned as coach at the end of the next season. Mike Adams, who won a regional at Washington Catholic High School, was hired to lead the Panthers beginning with the 1993-94 season. In his fourth season as coach, Wrights won its first sectional since Barnett's 1972 team. The 1996-97 team, which finished the season with a 17-7 record, defeated North Posey to claim the Evansville West sectional title. As the 1990s came to an end, Wrights was prepared to enter the 21st century and its ninth decade on the hill.
This has been an F.J. Wright's Feel the History production.